Brain-computer interfaces will soon make it possible to control robotic prosthetics and computer applications just by thinking. Maybe you've heard of Elon Musk's company Neuralink, which is planning to implant electrodes directly into people's brains to make this possible. But did you know that there are already two companies, BlackRock Neurotech and Synchron, that have already beaten Neuralink to clinical trials? This means that they could become a life-changing medical technology for paralyzed persons in the not-so-distant future. These companies' technologies are very different. BlackRock's device, no relation to the sketchy financial company, is a chip implanted directly into the brain, while Synchron's is implanted into blood vessels in the brain. In this video, we're going to take a deeper dive into these devices. We're going to start with a technological overview and then compare these devices based on safety, longevity, functionality, and how they might improve in the future. You can scrub through the video progress bar to jump in between chapters. Now, disclosure time. This video is sponsored by BlackRock Neurotech as a part of their education initiative, and I do ongoing consulting work for them. With that said, the facts and opinions in our videos are always informed by our own research, not talking points. And we are excited and support all companies creating BCIs to improve people's lives. Okay, so the first thing to note is that these devices are very different in function, use case, and design. So we'll have to make some inferences in our comparison. Variations of BlackRock's device, the Neuroport, have been implanted in humans for more than 15 years and there have been over 160 published papers documenting its use. Synchron Stentrode made its debut in humans just a few years ago, so there's only one published paper with human safety data for us to draw from. Because of this, we've had to make some educated guesses based on related data. All right, let's get into it. BlackRock Neurotech's BCI, the Neuroport, uses a series of tiny brain chips called Neuroport arrays, which consist of 96 densely packed electrodes. The Neuroport Array is the same technology used in the Utah Array, but is designated for human use. This small size allows it to record and stimulate neurons with a high degree of precision from virtually anywhere on the surface of the brain. Multiple arrays can be placed in one person, which creates brain-computer interfaces and neuroprosthetics that can be used to control objects and even repair senses. Synchron Stentrode was created to be an alternative method for implanting BCIs in the brain without the need for open brain surgery. It's an endovascular stent electrode array that broadly observes neural data from within the blood vessels in the brain. Neural stents, even some that record, have been around for some time, but Synchron hopes to build on this for uses in brain-computer interfacing. To reach the target area, the stentrode is tunneled through the vasculature starting at the chest, through the neck, and into the vasculature of the brain. The guide stent then retracts, releasing a cylindrical six to eight electrode array and conductive wiring which then become chronically implanted into the epithelium or vessel walls for the patient's lifetime. Specifically, the stentrode is placed in a large blood vessel at the top of the brain called the superior sagittal sinus. Safety is of course really important for a brain implant. I mean, the brain is kind of important. Of course, any brain implant will have some risks. BlackRock Neurotech's Neuroport is considered invasive because it requires open brain surgery and penetrates into brain tissue when it's implanted and explanted. During the implant process, as is true with most brain surgeries, it is common for a Neuroport array to cause local bleeding and minor tissue damage, which can be well managed by the surgeon. The primary risk following surgery is the potential of infection, which is quite rare and treatable by removing the device. To date, the Neuroport has been implanted in 32 people for a collective 30,000 patient days. That's 82 years in total, and there haven't been any reports of serious adverse effects. The biggest drawback to the Neuroport is that it doesn't last all that long. Rigid electrodes implanted in the soft brain matter create scar tissue and causes the electrodes on the device to break down over time. This doesn't pose a danger to the user, but it does shorten the lifespan of the devices. Generally, you can expect to get great signal quality for the first two years, after which the signal quality may steadily decline, but still remain usable for five years. Some users have even gotten seven plus years though, so your mileage may vary. These devices can, and after a while should, be removed, and it's possible that the chips could just be replaced or upgraded after that. Synchron Stentrode is considered minimally invasive because it gets implanted in the brain's vasculature and doesn't necessarily penetrate brain tissue. Since there has only been one inhuman study using the Stentrode, which included only two people, we don't know if the device will be safe in the long term. This is an important question because the Stentrode is a permanent implant. It may be that, like the Neuroport, the Stentrode starts having problems after a few years. If this happens, a patient would need to have invasive surgery to fix the issue. 
Assuming it does work as intended, a lifetime implant would be helpful for specific applications like ongoing neuromonitoring. The Centro does carry some unique risks that are a bit more clear at this time. Researchers familiar with this class of device have raised concerns about stroke risk, vessel damage, constriction of blood vessels, and degradation in the Centrode. These risks may be compounded in the target user group, more sedentary, paralyzed patients who are already more prone to cardiovascular issues. The Stentrode is most similar to the Medtronic PED device, another endovascular stent. In data collected from over 1,400 patients, clinicians reported a 5% chance of serious medical complications or death, and a 6% stroke risk. The Stentrode will likely be a lot safer than this device, but the risk is notable nonetheless. It should be noted that Synchron is conducting larger scale clinical trials right now, so we'll have better data on this soon. The Neuroport in its various configurations has been demonstrated time and time again in a variety of complex brain-computer interface functions. If you've seen those inspiring videos of people operating prosthetics or doing complex computer functions with brain-computer interfaces, you've seen the Neuroport in action. There are lots of examples of study participants using BlackRock's BCIs to control robotic arms and even touch through them. They've used these neuroprosthetics to interact with household items, use a fork and knife to cut a slice of bread and feed it to themselves, and even fist bump President Obama. It's also been used for various computer applications such as communicating via text-to-speech, sending emails and texting, searching the web, playing video games, and making art. Here are some amazing videos from Nathan Copeland's YouTube channel, BCI Can Do Better, where he plays video games like Pac-Man and Final Fantasy and draws images with his brain implant. It's insane that this stuff is already possible. All of these applications are possible because the Neuroport's modular design allows it to be customized for specific applications and users. Patients can choose what mental actions control what outputs, which decreases training time and makes a system that is overall more intuitive. For example, to make a mouse click, some users imagine grasping a ball, while others imagine tapping a touchscreen. Because these actions are so similar to conducting the actual mouse click, they can become second nature, which makes for a good BCI system that isn't tiring to use. Although we've only got one in-human paper from Synchron to draw from, we don't expect that the Centrode will be very capable as a BCI because of the physiological factors that will limit the device. For example, it's been shown that blood vessels block certain brainwave frequencies, which would have a pretty significant impact on what the device can do long term. Also, the Stentrode currently only has one implant location, a large vessel at the top of the brain called the superior sagittal sinus. This location means that it can only pick up signals from the legs, feet, and genitals. This could be useful for basic lower limb prosthetics, but restricts brain-computer interfacing applications and makes them feel disconnected and unintuitive. Synchron showed a video where one of their study participants was shown typing on a virtual keyboard, but the Centrode BCI itself is really only capable of two computer control functions, a mouse click and a zoom in. They needed to use eye tracking to actually move that cursor. So to say they're typing with a BCI is slightly misleading. Because of that location restriction, subjects had to imagine themselves kicking one of their legs to click and holding up one of their legs to zoom in. Aside from the limited functions, using your leg to click isn't very intuitive, and it can be exhausting for a user, especially when they have to manage an eye tracker. Because most of these limitations are due to physiological properties and location, we don't really see how this device could get much better. Plus, you can already do a lot of these simple applications with just a non-invasive EEG headset. As both devices reach the market, we expect that this will open the floodgates to continued innovation and rapidly advance the technology behind modern BCI implants. For intracortical arrays like the Neuroport, we expect to see more electrodes and greater coverage over the cortex, which will continue to expand the possible applications and accuracy of the devices. The biggest hurdle to getting to that future is the short lifespan of the devices, which will require new material processes and implantation methods. As for Synchron, Endovascular BCIs will be plagued by issues of signal quality, limited implantable locations, low electrode count, and high stroke risk for the foreseeable future. To create more capable brain-computer interfaces, they will have to prove that lots of stentrodes can be safely implanted at scale in very small vessels, which right now is pretty risky. Even if this approach was possible, I'm not sure it really makes sense with the current device. The Stentrode really is innovative in other neurotech applications, like neuromonitoring and neuromodulation, and possibly even lower limb prosthetics. 
I can see many scenarios where the stentrode could replace antiquated deep brain stimulation electrodes and ECOG arrays for epilepsy monitoring. However, this video is about brain-computer interfaces, and for most applications, the stentrode is outclassed by what BlackRock's Neuroport can do. If you're going to go through the trouble of getting a brain implant to communicate and move, the Neuroport just makes more sense. As always, thank you to all you BCI guys and gals out there for watching. If you've made it this far, please like, subscribe, and share the video to let us know that you like learning about Neurotech. See you in the next video.